Hello and welcome back to OC Avery. This video today is all on overwintering your birds. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you everything that I do to overwinter my birds successfully or as successfully as possible with minimal losses. Uh, obviously I do not claim to be an expert at all, uh, but I'm just giving you what I do and my experiences uh, and what I've learned from them uh, in order to improve uh, how I overwinter the birds and then just give those tips to you guys. If you do have any other tips then please leave them in the comment section below so that we can all see them and all uh, you know, make, make amendments to how we overwinter our birds. So we're going to go through the hardware required um, or best required. Uh, other fundamental things when overwintering the birds and then also the diet of the birds um, as, as we change that for the winter uh, and what would usually be the show season over this time. So we'll just start off with the diet. So in terms of the diet to overwinter the birds, I completely change it when, it's, um, when it comes into really about uh, October sort of time from the breeding season. Uh, and that is just through one specific thing is actually just adding rapeseed. Now what I do is I buy in seed mixers uh, from BJF Feeds uh, is my supplier. Uh, and I just buy their basic European finch mix and they have a breeding uh, mix, which is a no rape and a, a, a rape mix. And the idea of that is that rape has a 45% fat content. So ideally, when overwintering your birds, you want to be getting them fatter. Uh, so they have those energy stores to survive the winter, especially when it's cold. Uh, obviously the fat is an insulator, so it keeps them warm and they've got the energy. Uh, and, and also what is helpful with that is that when we come to condition the birds, uh, they, they have something to lose and it's just the energy source really. Um, and we want them to be comfortable throughout the winter so that when we take them into the breeding season, they're, they're ready to go. Uh, so yeah, that is one thing I do, is supplementing rape into the diet because of its 45% fat content. Another thing for uh, substituting into the diet is blue moor or poppy seed. Uh, and that is once again because of the fat content. So blue moor has a 50% fat content, which means it's really good to fatten up your birds. So I supplement that to the birds once a week in a finger draw. Ideally, I give um, about half a finger draw per bird. So depending on how many birds are in a cage, they might have a few finger draws worth over the course of a week so that the birds have got that fat content on them. Uh, you know, they've got the fat stores and they really are just able to keep warm throughout the winter. And then finally, something else that I also like to give the birds is sunflower seed uh, and sunflower seed. So that's sunflower hearts mainly just because uh, the, the, with the harder out of shell, there's only a few birds that can uh, break through that. Obviously, most finches can't accept really the crossbills. Uh, and maybe hoar finches and, and you know much larger finches than uh, the majority of what I keep. Uh, and, and that is again because of the high fat content in sunflower seeds. Uh, so really it's just about building up the fat on the birds so that they have the insulating layer ready for the winter. It's very important to make sure that they do uh, as you will find that they'll be much more comfortable having that uh, than, than being quite lean and fit um, because it, it really it really does uh, have an effect on the birds uh, as you may notice um, also something to mention is that because um, yeah, generally shows are in the winter as well so we are trying to add that little bit of extra fat on the birds just to increase the size and uh, you know shape of some of them especially uh, which is which is one of the main things about it and um, why you really should increase your fat content over we, uh, over the winter uh, and the fat intake of the birds. Also through the winter months, um, but really uh, just the overall bird keeping is important and the bird health. Now bird health is one of the most important things within the hobby because it's always important and you always want your birds to be in top condition. Uh, but something that I also um, add to the diet and really supplement extra of during um, the mole and then to over the winter uh, all, all the way up to about and getting the birds fit and then still I am supplementing that and all the way through the breeding season is live food and uh, vegetables because it's important to give the birds a balanced diet. Uh, what, what I think is quite important is that you aren't always just only supplementing seed to the birds because naturally the birds wouldn't eat just seeds and um, especially 
uh, over the summer months and when they breed, they would also have live food in there. But overall, they're always eating um, plant matter as well. So I always make sure that three or four times a week, I'm supplementing the birds uh, some vegetables. So I'll give them broccoli or peas or sweet corn uh, or spinach and different things like that because it's important that the birds are getting that in them as it would replicate how they would eat in the wild and um, as you saw from last week's video on uh, keeping buntings with my yellow hammers um, i also have the frozen maggots now and the frozen mealworms so i have given that to the birds all in this past week and that's just once again an important thing just because I want to make sure the birds are taking in that little bit of live food um, and it's really just for the extra protein in there a little bit of fat content but it's just the overall health and happiness of the birds which is important um, to get them through the winter months so onto the hardware of everything um, that you would really need to overwinter your birds successfully now the first thing that I think is one of the most important things is actually having a heater because especially when the temperature drops below zero you really want to be making sure that you have a heater in there to just really keep it about one or two degrees um, at, at the least because I don't like to let it get in here get below freezing uh, then it's it's a case of you know defrosting and, and, and de-icing basically all of the drinkers quite often any baths so i'd stop supplementing baths um regularly uh, over the winter just because i don't want it to really you know affect the birds with the temperature uh, so i always make sure that i have a heater in both bird sheds now uh, in this bird shed i am i've got currently on order a uh, four foot bar heater and i just put that on and the main reason for that is i don't have it on in the day but i have it on in the night just because i want to make sure that i keep that temperature above freezing uh, however currently in this bird shed i have a two foot bar heater by my side uh, and, and that really is just in case it drops before i get this um, other bar heater i can keep it just above freezing uh, but i do want to make sure that I, i've definitely got something very um, very powerful so in the event that we do get very cold temperatures such as when it was 2010 or 2009 winter i believe and we were getting temperatures about minus 18 at least where i live um, you know i didn't keep birds then uh, with me only being eight but um it, again it's, it's just that sort of temperatures would would wipe out birds really quite quickly and i want to just try and keep it um, a steady temperature because a temperature fluctuation can really have quite an effect on the birds something else that i um i have and i'm currently just need to invest in again just for this shed uh, is a dehumidifier now in my uh, large finch shed i have a dehumidifier bag it's actually a car dehumidifier and it's um it's basically a, a bag of uh, anhydrous salts and what they do is they take water and moisture out of the air uh, what that does is means that if you do get below freezing it keeps the frost out because there isn't anything to freeze in the air um which is which is very important and it just makes it less crisp and a little you know less um, less sharp to the birds i guess you could say uh, which, is, which is very important because it does matter an awful lot that the birds are comfortable over the winter months and we aren't uh, you know we don't have casualties because of human error and and really things that could be avoided so uh, that that's what i have is my my large finch shed is a seven by five so i don't need a massive um, dehumidifier because uh, it just wouldn't be necessary but this shed is I, a four by ten basically uh, and I do want to make sure, so I'm going to have to buy a dehumidifier in here. Um, and there are several different brands. I'm only going to be in a small one because of the square footage, which is this. Uh, so this really, if I just take into account general dimensions, it's 10 by 4, so it's a 40 square foot plan. Uh, and then if we just take into height, so we have the volume, it's going to be about 6 foot. So we're looking at about 400, and, no, sorry, not 400. 240 square feet in here so i would be needing a um a, a, 
Uh, I'd say a mid-sized dehumidifier just to keep it uh, in here, not too moist in the air, not too humid, because it is going to help keep that frost out, uh, which is once again a very important thing. Uh, but I do have a car dehumidifiers, which if I do need, I can just put in here and they'll just take the edge off of it, which is very important. Also, just something to uh, mention with the humidifiers is that actually a dehumidifier increases the effects of a heater. So that is why I always try and do the combination. So I have the dehumidifier to take the moisture out of the air and therefore what you get is a better response by the heater. Um, because what you're seeing is that rather than there being quite a lot of water in the air, the, uh, the, the heater would really warm up the water and, and a smaller area around the heater rather than the whole shed. Whereas if you remove the water, the um, the heat can transfer through the air around the whole shed, which really just makes it a much better, much better effect, especially when it comes to really sub-zero temperatures. Um, and it's, it's going to massively help the birds and uh, in increase really just their health and the welfare. So also in this large bird shed, we have the heater here. So this is a four or three foot long bar heater. It's perfect really for this shed. It fits just nicely across uh, and heats up the whole shed whenever I need it to, especially when it's really cold in the winter months. Now, something that is a general all time thing to mention uh, and know for the hobby, is actually um, draft proofing areas because birds really aren't a fan of draft and especially during the winter that draft can have a much bigger effect on the birds than if it was in summer because we're getting a cold draft and really nippy and, and really quite sharp and, on the birds and especially with some of the lighter birds such as the red poles and the siskins compared to the Norwich canaries um, they, they really have much less feather density which is which is really something that you need to take into account so make sure that you have very minimal draft in your bird sheds and your flights now uh, especially as it's coming to the winter uh, I usually have my um, my shed doors open in summer uh, I have like a safety door obviously and everything so it, it, it's just it's just so we don't have any birds escaping obviously someone can't just enter um, but I do have them open because they get the air circulation it's just the heat and obviously if it is too hot in here there's a, a quick escape for the heat uh, but obviously it's opposed in winter so I make sure that all my doors are shut so the birds aren't getting a cold draft through and it really just keeps the temperature much more steady uh, now with this shed i have uh, a lot of light coming in so not only do i have all of the leds but i also have the area above uh, the sort of the first entrance section of the shed which is just a clear perspex roof so we get plenty of natural daylight however in the other shed I do find that having the door open is massive um, and really just helps with the natural light going in there because I don't really have the LEDs in there to cover all the cages at the top we do have the um, LED strips underneath in the slight larger flight cages um, and really just having that the excess of natural light is brilliant but it is important that I make sure that the birds uh, are happy, they are healthy and they are draft free. So I wrap my doors in um, that sort of a plastic a plastic sheeting. So it's just a clear plastic sheet uh, and that just goes over the doors, over the mesh. Because what we do have is then the natural light coming through. But what we don't have is a massive draft which could really, um, you know, really harm the birds, especially when it's very cold. Uh, also on the plastic wrapping, I do that to all of my flights that have birds in. So as you saw in last week's video with the um, bunting flight and then several weeks before uh, the Keeping Crossbills video, we have the front of the flight wrapped um, in the plastic sheeting. And once again, that is just um, for the purpose of we get the natural light and the birds can see through it almost. But what we don't have is the effect of a draft on the birds, which really does um, harm them massively. Uh, and, and something to mention with that as well is that especially finches they seem to be very very much more affected by the cold and the draft than compared to a lot of um, other bird species such as pigeons and poultry because of the um, 
sort of uh, surface area to volume ratio. They have a, a, a very large surface area for a very small bird. Um, so it is important that, um, you know, that is why we get a, such, a, such a large effect on them with the cold and with the winter, which is why we can end up with some major losses. Um, if we don't do anything to prevent those losses and really just take the edge off of the winter for them. So as you can see here, we just have the plastic on the doors um, and that is just for really draft proofing. So when I have this main door open, we don't get any big draft coming through uh, and really it doesn't affect any of the birds here or the birds down below. Now, something else that you may have noticed, uh, especially with how I keep my birds, is actually just the expanse of room and the size of the cages that I give them, especially through the winter months. Uh, and, and the main reason being for that is just because of the exercise it gives them. Now, um, what, what, how I want you to think about this is that when, when you're, for example, maybe out on a winter's day, the worst thing you can be do doing is stood not doing you know no movement or anything and um, really that is how I think about it with the birds which is why I give them uh, as large a cage as I can um, and rather than just separating and dividing each cage so each bird only has two perches it can hop across and um, is why I've got this so these are five feet yeah five foot long cages almost um, and this is where I've got the red pole cocks here we've got the red pole hens here and the siskin hens um, and, and the main reason for that as well as giving the spacing out between the perches is so that the birds have a really a big expanse of room to fly because not only is it keeping them fit um, but it's keeping them warm throughout the winter which is really important and um, now you might be wondering you know well what you know what you're trying to build up fat on the birds uh you know through the, um, the adding of blue more to the diet adding the rape seed to the diet adding the sunflower seed to the diet why would you give them a bigger cage if all that's going to do is um you know basically work that off but it's the main reason being is because not only is it for the movement of the birds and keeping them warm but it's also just getting them that little bit of extra fitness so that when we come to condition them um for breeding then we have we have a really easy base to fly uh, to really just build them on and um, so what i had uh, up until you know a few weeks ago was a norwich cock who uh, i had him since last october i bought him from um, stafford and he couldn't you know he never had the ability to really he couldn't fly the length of this cage he was in an aviary for probably the best part of six months and i never um you know got him flying and the reason main reason being for that is he just wasn't fit enough even when i tried to condition him and i think the main main reason being for that was because the chap who had him before only ever had him in a show cage uh, he bred him put him in a show cage and then molded him out through the show cage so he was only ever in such a, a small area that he didn't have the ability to fly so i think that well, that was partially to blame but also because when it comes to building it up, he really was struggling to fly and he needed some, you know, really needed something to build on. And he didn't have that to fly, he had very little muscle, which is why having the birds in these much larger cages and much bigger space now between the perches is so that they're constantly flying back and forth, keeping warm, but also keeping fit. And that is a massive part of bird keeping, is that you're keeping your birds warm, but you're also keeping them fit because that's going to give you much better success in the breeding season. So now it's time for this week's eye catcher. So this is actually the first canary that has ever got um, eye catcher for me at least, um, as you will have seen, uh, because generally I do keep only natives with the odd canary. Now this is a satinac canary hen. Uh, she's a buff bird uh, and a proven hen from this year from the, the chap I bought her off. And really what I've just noticed with her is that She's really got some good feather quality on her, which I'm really, you know, really pleased to see. And she's really, she really bright eyes. She's a red eyed bird, actually, if I can get that to focus enough. And um, yeah, I, I just really like this bird. So I am looking to add a few more pairs of satinette canaries to my collection. Um, I have her and then I have the yellow cock bird 
who will be paired to her for next year. And really what I'm looking to do is have these canaries uh, for feeders for the Norwich, but also to start a line uh, and my own line of um, muling canaries, um, ideally which will give the best mules when put to a goldfinch, uh, a red pole or a siskin. Um, what I might look to do is, when, whilst I'm developing this line of satinets, and we're getting the red eyes and we're getting the good colour, so that I can add that to, um, you know, put a goldfinch to, or make a, a really nice mule, is maybe we try and add some size in there. So we might um, put a bit of a, a Norwich in there at some point, uh, and try and increase the size um, without breeding it straight back to the original size over the course of a few years. So that is this week's um, eye, eye catcher, a buff satinette canary hen. Quick something to add, um, I do have a question for you guys actually on this because I'm not 100% up to scratch on my canaries. Um, so this is a satinette canary as you can see. What type of show cage would she go in? Because I, I only have native show cages as well as a few foreign finch show cages. I just use as training cages now. So if you do know what sort of show cage that she would have to go in, the, the satinettes, then please just leave that in the comments below. Message me on Instagram or message me on Facebook. The links will all be below, below to my social media. I also have email, so if you want to email me answering that question, or if you have any more questions, or you would like to sponsor a video, then email oc.avery at gmail.com, and I'd be very happy to talk to you and um, have a chat with you. Now, as you saw in last week's video, we talked about the placement of the birds during the breeding season, which was the yellow hammers. And um, really, what I've had a bit of an idea now, which I think would benefit uh, everything, is actually if I had the yellow hammers in the smaller flights um, at the side, so that is a two and a half feet wide by eight foot long, rather than a four feet wide flight. And they can go in there on their own. And actually what I'll do with the larger flight is put these guys now in here, are two Siberian bullfinches. So that is my 2017 pair of Siberian bullfinches. We have a normal hen and a normal cock split for pastel. We also have a trio of Siberian goldfinches and they, um, the cock is normal split Yumo. The hen or a hen is a normal split Yumo as well. And we also have an A gate hen in there um, who is split for a mutation, but um, I'm, I'm not too sure myself. I can't remember what she was actually split for. But either way, we have some Siberian goldfinches and some Siberian bullfinches in together. Now, the reason that I've put them together now, um, and I've got them all five of them there, so the pair of bullfinches and the trio of goldfinches, is because I want to get them used to each other over the winter months. So by the time it comes to spring and we have them breeding, uh, they're, they're already used to each other. So I'm going to put all of the northern birds into the eight by four flight. So it's these five. Now, not only will this be ideal because we'll have the northern birds together um, and really it's just a bit more of a different environment for them with the bullfinches will have quite a good area with the goldfinches having plenty of room uh, to, to stay fit and exercise it also gives us the opportunity to have some northern hybrids in there so that would rely on the goldfinch cock uh, mating with the bullfinch hen so if we could actually get some um, Siberian goldfinch across Siberian bullfinches, so goldie bullies, that would be absolutely um, fantastic, really. So I just wanted to just run that by you guys. Uh, and I've not actually seen a northern um, goldfinch cross northern bullfinch. So if you do have any photos of one or videos, then please do send them to me over Facebook or Instagram or even email them me. I have seen a native goldfinch cross um, native bullfinch, I've seen Siberian goldfinch cross uh, native bullfinch and I've seen native goldfinch cross Siberian bullfinch. So I've seen every other combination other than the uh, Siberian cross Siberian. So that would be really interesting because not only will it give this a chance for normal goldie bullies, but also the chance 
of uh, breeding some mutation golden bullies in um, if the the cockbird yumo comes through into the hen uh, bullfinch and we could get some really nice yumo hybrids there although they would be hens and we would get normal cocks i believe So that brings us to the end of this week's video. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, we've talked today about how to bring your birds through the winter, so overwintering your birds, and what I do for that. So I don't claim to be an expert. I'm just giving you my tips uh, and advice of how I've done it in the past uh, and how I will be doing it this year so that you guys can amend how you would do it or um, actually just find out to start with how you're going to um, take the birds through the winter and keep them in good condition uh, through that and obviously having uh, very few if any um, losses now if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button as that will uh, you know you can follow along the channel you get to see all of my new videos uh, as i post every week uh, if you haven't already then hit the notification bell and that will notify you every time i upload a new video and hit the like so i can see that you guys are enjoying these videos and if you aren't enjoying these videos then please just leave a comment uh, and saying why because i'm always looking to improve my content so that you guys get exactly what you want out of it uh, and if there's anything in particular that you would like to see or any information or any questions you have then leave them in the comments below if not you can just uh, email me if you want to the uh, my email is in the description below we also have my instagram so message me on instagram or message me on facebook uh, and i'm more than happy to answer your questions either in um, in the messages or in the next video and uh, if not also make sure that you can share the video uh, with someone who else would be basically interested in uh, how to overwinter their birds uh, uh, you know just a few new tricks um, and ideas how you're going to do that so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video